emergency is in effect. Hey guys, and welcome to a new Let's Play. This one was uh, requested to me by Jimmy Fails. Now, um, I don't really know a huge amount about this game. I know it's some kind of adventure-esque early PlayStation game. Came out in 1997, as it says there. Uh, which is interesting, because that means it's one year newer than the original Resident Evil. Um, I watched a Let's Play of this game back in... Oh my god, pretty much when I first discovered YouTube, I think, uh, it was a Let's Play made by Kokoskia. And we're going to get demo rolls and things, aren't we? Yes, we are. Um, so, I basically remember little bits and pieces. Now, unfortunately, I have just recorded the first episode of this game. And my, my microphone audio was incredibly garbled. And I couldn't save it. So we're going to have to do the, the first uh, video again. Which is... It is what it is. Okay. Uh, I don't really know what this game's about. Uh, over blood. Uh, I don't know if there's monsters and things in it. Well, I mean, I'm, we've seen monsters and stuff already in the intro. And uh, I've seen some corpses in the actual game. But apart from that, I'm not really sure. So, uh, without any extra bollocks, let's get into it. There are some pretty weird puzzles in this game, apparently. Uh, I haven't found anything that has been difficult. The only problem I think I'm going to have with this game is everything looks the same. And there are no maps. That's a problem. <laughs> I was considering uh, drawing some maps or looking for some maps, which I have done, but there doesn't appear to be any. So uh, we're just gonna have to we're just gonna have to go for it. Uh, it looks like you can save it wherever you want as well, which is nice. Uh, anyway, let's go. Let's start our adventure with Discount Barry Burton, as uh, my friend Jimmy says. <laughs> So, things apparently are going bad, <laughs> wherever the hell we are. Maybe there's too much blood in the walls. I don't know. But wherever we are, it's minus 10 degrees. That's really freaking cold. And there is our friend. Not Barry. Very handsome lad. What 
What? What is this place? How did I get here? I can't remember. I can't remember myself. My gosh, I, I don't even know who I am. My gosh. Well, 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 that old uh, chestnut, eh? We have explosive amnesia. We can't remember Jack. Not even our own name. And the game throws us in straight away. It's really cold in here. I, I'm uh, too cold. I'm freezing. I have to warm this place up. Or I'll freeze to death. Oh, no. Now, we can fondle with this. Power down. Function terminated. You can also see our health is trickling away there in the corner. Now, this actually is power down. I guess I can't operate this. This is actually pretty simple to solve. Uh, there is something here. A cryogenic chamber. Why was I sleeping here? We have no idea, Barry. We have no idea. But if we have a little fiddle with this. Auxiliary power device located underneath. Do not activate under normal conditions. Danger of overload and malfunction. For emergency use only. Aye. So, there is a emergency activator thing, doodad. Underneath! That's very important, because here is a thing in this game. I wonder what's under this. Yeah, yeah, we can crouch. And we can duck walk around like we've shit our pants. But crouching in this game is v apparently very important. So, keep that in mind. It's getting warmer. But it's still too cold. I need something to keep me warm. Yeah, because running around in this bloody, I don't know, pajamas apparently is, is not efficient. Or not sufficient, I should say. So, if we have a little jog around here somewhere, there's uh, this. It's not frozen. I think I can open it. Auxiliary power must have warmed it up. You yeah, know, that push kind of... Uh, state that he goes into that he does a lot and it's really annoying oh look now we have a little friend anyway there is a container here with yeah see see what i mean he he likes to push things quite a lot i don't know if he's pushing things or if he's flipping us off i'm not really sure uh but there we go uh yeah so we have to actually crouch walk this to open this box up but we get a jacket but it isn't just a jacket, as we will see. Great! With this, I won't freeze to death. Yeah, it's not just a jacket. There's also a memory chip there. A memory chip? This might be useful. Yes, it's definitely going to be useful. Uh, you can see that we actually got ourselves some boots, some gloves, and uh, some kind of, like, boiler suit. I'm not really sure what's going on here. Like, look at this. We have like, all these, like, bike kind of like hazmat suits. I wouldn't mind a hazmat suit. That would be pretty badass. There's also like, these look like suits as well. But you see what I mean when we, when he pushes things, it looks like he's flipping us off, which I approve of, by the way. There's more of these biohazard suits. Anyway, we have this robot here. A small robot, yep. Now that memory chip we found, actually goes in his brain. There's a small hole here. I don't know where the small hole is. We're, we're just going to nod and agree. A technologically advanced microchip. Okay. Does that say like a Motorola on it? Motorola something? I don't know. It looks like it will fit in the slot. And there is our little buddy. Peepo the beep bop. Yeah, it's got like the personality of a dog. Peepo the beep bot. Our friend here, Barry, Can't you talk? is not impressed. You understand me, don't you? Are you trying to say something? Is that all you can say? Beep? What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, beep beep to you too. You're a heck of a conversationalist. 
<laughs> oh, for crying out loud, don't be so sensitive. I know it's not your fault. Okay, whatever you say. Actually, I wouldn't mind the company. So, what am I supposed to call you? Peepo? Why not? Peepo it is. I'm not... Well, it's nice to meet you, Peepo. I'm not really sure how he got Peepo from that, but, I mean, sure. I was going to call him Beepbot, but, hey, what do I know? Anyway, we have our friend here, Peepo the Beepbot. Looks like possibly somebody else was locked up in here with us as well, and they've escaped, but I don't know. Anyway, let's go. Now, we can switch between our characters on the fly, which is kind of useful. In fact, it's required. So, remember that thing we were trying to fondle and it didn't work? We can get our friend Peepo, uh, the beatbot, to have a fiddle around with this thing. He's our R2-D2, basically. Excellent. We've got a door unlocked. Door locks. Displaying information on selected organism. What do you know? Looks like I have a name after all. Raz. Raz Carsey. Raz Carsey. Revival program has been changed due to state of emergency. Original setting for date and time of revival. Eternity. Eternity? They never meant to let me out. If it wasn't for this state of emergency, I'd have been in the deep freeze forever. Yeah. That's not great. Now, I will say one thing. The voice acting, it's not bad. You know, it's okay. It really is more than adequate, I would say. Right, so we've unlocked some doors. Let's start exploring, shall we? Okay. So we're going to control beep bot. And this is one of the problems with this game that I have discovered so far. See these white corridors? Yeah, get used to that. That is the game. Um, now, one thing I should mention with uh, our friend here. We can crouch and we can jump. Oh god, we can jump. Now, I haven't had to jump yet. But I'm not looking forward to the time where we need to jump. Anyway, if we switch back to the beat bot, we can find... It's like a card here somewhere. Found unidentified object. There we go. You need to use a uh, beat bot to actually do that. Because Raz here can't quite uh, manage to put his hand in. So, you know. Alright, let's go. <sighs> Onwards and upwards. There is another door in that room, but it's locked from the other side. So we're not going to worry about that yet. Now we can, we can run by holding down circle, but it's a very slow, like, uh, well, the running speed itself is okay, but it takes about a second for Raz to actually start running and about a second to stop. It's a little bit weird, but it's okay. Now, notice in the splash screen when this game first started, it mentioned electronic arts and high score. Now, they were very much involved with um, Jungle Strike and Urban Strike. Which I thought was pretty nice. Pretty nice to see that logo. Okay, now, problem. We have three doors to try. This is a problem in this game that I've discovered. All these similar looking corridors that are absolutely bristling with doors. It's, yeah, I, I really would like a map. Anyway, let's go through this one. Let's have a little poke around. Look, I mean, what's the point in this corridor? Like, this corridor didn't need to be in the game, right? That door could have just directly left, led straight into this next room. But, no. It needed to be like an airlock kind of dealio going on. But anyway, that... Oh, we, hey, he's flipping us off. He's flipping... You fucking dick. Right, anyway. 
Hey, see what I mean? He'll get stuck on that push animation literally in midair. Anyway, let's go have a little look at this weird cream room looking thing. Looks like we're in some sort of sub basement. Okay. I don't know which was worse, being frozen or being buried alive like this. People, why would anybody do this to me? No way to go but up, and that's fine with me. Yeah. Also, notice on that scanner of him, he had no junk. I don't know if that's an indicator. And we have cats. Man, what a horrible way to die. What is that? A disease? I hope it's not contagious. Yeah, so I'm guessing there's zombies in this game. So this dude here, why would there be a dead body here? I don't know, but it looks like he's wearing a very similar outfit to us. Let's crouch down and check his pockets. We found a memo. Now this memo I've actually written down in my book because <laughs> we found it earlier. All it is is, a, is some codes. There's no actual written words on there. Alright, let's stand back up. So, our inventory is accessed by pushing select uh, and we can scroll through everything. Ah, shit. I need to go back. We've forgotten an item. We've forgotten the voice recorder. Which... Uh, I can't remember where that was. Oh, I think I remember where that was. We need the voice recorder. Well, I mean, we kind of don't really need it. But it allows us to save our game. Which I guess is important. Because you can save your game wherever you want. I mean, we have got emulators. You know, well, we are using emulation so we have the power of save states. But I do like the safety of actually having like a proper hard save. Now, notice that it looked like we probably needed to jump up there. But we didn't. We can just walk up there. So I'm not really sure where this jump mechanic is going to be used. And I'll be honest with you guys. I'm not looking forward to the to where we need to jump. That's going to be bad. Right, I think the voice recorder was like in here somewhere maybe? It was. Okay, we'll take that. So that allows us to save the game. And it doesn't really look like we have a limit of how many times we can use that. Which is kind of nice. Feel like a bit of a bell end for leaving the, the, the voice recorder back there. But hey, it is what it is. It's cool. At least we've got it now. I don't like to rely on uh, to relay to rely on save states because uh, I've had problems with that in the past. <laughs> yeah, saving over saves and save states sometimes is not working at all. Um, what's it, what is interesting so far about this game is I'm kind of enjoying the atmosphere. It's very foreboding. Obviously, something has happened. I'm not really exactly sure what. And, right, so I've never been in that door behind us. But we do need to go into this door. I know that much. And there's another door this way. It's, yeah, this door needs a code to go into. So, let's break sequence from what I did in the last video and let's go through this door see if there's anything in here because the code door is the way that we do need to go ah what's through here oh we have a red corridor curious a warning device is on. There must have been a big accident. Yeah, no shit. Uh, let's actually drop a save here. Because, like, I don't know if there's enemies in this game. 
I mean, we know there's monsters and zombies and stuff like that, but whether they actually attack us or anything, I don't know. Yeah, so we got 27 minutes into it. And my cat is meowing his head off. I have no idea why. Did that actually save? Did that actually save? Oi! What? What's going on? My cat is being weird. Alright, let's try that again. Right, oh, okay. Okay, so you need to push circle to save over an existing save. That's useful, I guess. Right, let's have a little look through here. Like I said, I don't know if there's going to be a monster that's going to horribly tear our face off or anything like that. Cat, please don't get up here. You break things. Ooh. Oh, man. We have, like, stairs and stuff. This is interesting. A very long wind. Oh my god, that is a very long winded animation there. So, what the hell happened in this place then? Because everything's like destroyed. I guess. Ah, right, hang on. So, that just leads. No, we don't want to push the stairs. We want to get up the stairs. And I'll save you watching all of that trick by. And go through here. And again, just white corridor after white corridor after white corridor. Oh, I guess, really, that was the lock from the, okay, so that just loops us right round, I mean, I guess that's good to know, <laughs> not really sure why that door is barred, uh, I don't know, but at least we've kind of gone full circle, and we know that there's literally nothing back that way. And if you could stop flipping me off, dude, I'd appreciate it. Lots of um, Raz here getting stuck on objects and getting just stuck on the scenery. And he, you know, just ends up flipping us all off. Okay, so I guess the code door is the way to go. Which I thought it was, because that's the way I went last time. And we found some stuff. Uh, but yeah, that was just curious. So that door is a dead end. That door is the zombie door. Okay. I'm going to call him a zombie. He looks like a zombie. Now. Let's use the code door. It's a numeric code lock. Yes, it is, Raz. How astute of you. Uh, and... If I get my book. And last time, I don't know if this is randomized because it gives you three codes. But last time it was 619. Are oh, you absolute fucking again. penis? Alright, let's try it again. 61891. Password accepted. Right, okay, so the password isn't randomized then. Also, Peepo the beep bot is really annoying. The way he's just constantly like squeaking and squealing in your ears. Okay. So, if you are curious to see where this would lead us, uh, more doors, actually. More doors. So we've got one, two... There's two options back there. Now, we can't do anything with this yet. I don't suppose you'd like to try to make that jump.
So you want me to go first, huh? <laughs> yeah, that ain't happening, Chief. There's no way I could jump that. Must be another way to uh, cross. Yeah, so, I mean, I don't really know the jumping mechanics of this game because we haven't really had any. It looks like you can jump just about a, one of these floor tiles. Um, but definitely not going to risk jumping down there. Anyway, let's keep going. Right. Now here... Ah, oh, cats. No. He wants attention. I'm going to have to stop in a minute and give my cat attention. Uh, right, look. I was so excited when I got here. I was like, dudes, a fucking coffee machine, man. Because, incidentally, uh, I'm out of coffee. Nothing here. Raz, it's a coffee machine. Dude, it has to be. It seems to be broken. Of course it is. Can you imagine what kind of nightmare situation that that is to be trapped underground with nothing but a squeaking robot and the fucking coffee machine's broken? Can you can you even comprehend that? Like I could deal with everything else, right? But the coffee machine. Dude, Jesus. Anyway, we have a statue. Uh an interesting statue. In a very low poly way, I guess. Just floating. Apparently it's a very heavy statue. Alright, Beepo. Calm down. You'll get your chance. The statue is floating in the air. But how can that be? Ah, uh, well. Funny enough, if you notice that little panel there. We can interact with Beepo. Not possible to obtain. Oh, right. Yes. I remember. You can push the statue off. It fell. I didn't even push it that hard. Yeah, that seems to be insanely dangerous if you ask me, but sure. But it is narrowly balanced on an anti-gravity device. Which is really interesting. Ah, can Peepo repair the coffee machine? Out of service. Damn it, Peepo, you're useless. Ugh, okay. So we have an anti-gravity thing, which I'm guessing is going to get us over that hole. Twenty-four C, pretty warm for a refriger refrigerator. Yeah, twenty-four degrees. I would be dying. A large refrigerator. It won't open. So I don't think we can get in there at all. Okay. I'm actually not as confused second time of running around this place. Just because we've ruled out a few... Well, one of the biggest um, other options in this game. So we've got this anti-grav device, which I'm guessing we can go through there. <coughs> I don't know. I haven't tried that yet. So anyway, we came in there and we've got two more options. So let's try these other options. The door has no power. It's not reacting. Right, we have one option. Peepo, shut up. He's really bloody annoying. He's really getting on my nerves. I'll tell you that much. Right, yeah, this is the room that we got to when we ended the video, actually. Okay. Why are these things here? I don't know. This stuff is grotesque. So we've got, like, brains in jars and stuff. Oh, yeah. Looks like a xenonor, a xenomorph. Are they still alive? I kind of look alive, to be honest. This stuff is grotesque. Anyway, um, took me a while, but I eventually discovered you can push this stuff. As we can see, Raz here has the strength of ten barriers. But that's okay. I don't know what you can push. I'm guessing there's probably going to be a lot in this game that we can push. <clears throat> okay, so let's keep going. Yeah, I'm not really sure why we have this like comical robot that follows us. I mean, I get it, right? He's he's he has his usefuls, but, but why did they make him so annoying? That's what I want to know. Okay, now remember that card that we picked up. 
can use that card to open these lockers. Seems to accept cards, except you can't use it on these two. Yeah, can't do it. It's not opening. But there is another one over here. So let's give this a shift. And let's get this one out of the way. Yeah, will you shut up, beep, beep bot? Seriously. Can we not remove his squeaker? You know, like when you give a dog a squeak toy and he drives you nuts? So you take the squeaker out of the toy and give it back? Yeah, I feel like that's the sort of situation we are here. Right, now, one thing I am going to do, because I don't know... I don't know if we have a health bar. I don't know if we take damage. Uh, I'm not really sure. So let's drop a save. It actually takes ages. I might just use save states. And then save a... No, I don't know. Ah, fuck. See? See? That's what happens. <sighs> right. All right, let's just find a game slot 10. There we go. Let's just drop a save there. That's so much quicker than using the memory card. Right, so let's use our memory card. Not our memory card. Our silver key card. <laughs> yeah, an electric shock security system. Now, I don't really understand why, because we have the key card. If we tried to break in, I could understand. If we didn't have the key card and we touched it, I could understand. But, no, we actually need to fondle this. Whoever built this place had a cruel sense of humor. Aye. What's the point of switches that you can't switch? Can't figure this thing out. It's just too complicated. Okay. But, you know who can? We can enlist the help of a very annoying robot pest that we flip off. Power switch off. This was the security switch. I'm glad you're with me, Peepo. Yeah, something like that. Okay. It shouldn't be locked anymore. No. Now, when this first opened, I was like, oh, nothing in it. But if we actually search it, we get a laser knife found. Take. Now, I'm not sure what this... This thing's sharp enough to cut metal. I don't know... I'm guessing this is just a random item. It's not actually an equipable weapon. Because it specifically mentions that it can cut metal. So, I'm not really sure. Uh, however, this is where I ended my original video. So, this is where we're going to end this one. Um, I guess we only really have one way to go now. We have to try the gravity jump. Oh, Jesus, fuck. Uh, we have to try the anti-grav device. Which I'm sure we're going to, I don't know, stand on and jump over the hole. Question mark? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I was expecting this game to be a big old bag of dog shit. But, I mean, we're one video in. Am I enjoying it? Am I having a good time? Yeah, actually, I am. It's old. <laughs> it's aged. It's got a little bit of crust on it. But, eh, it's not Clock Tower 2. It's not the ring. So, yeah. I'm enjoying myself. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, guys. And as always, till next time.